Let's get right down to business in this old school nothing fancy knife review talking again about Kershaw. Man, they get a lot of things right in their knife designs. One of them is value. That you can get a high quality knife with good blade steel, good construction, fast deploying, solid lockup, tons of utility for a very reasonable price. Witness the Kershaw 1760 Skyline. Previously reviewed in the Nothing Fancy Project, one of my all time faves for EDC carry. Apparently, according to a lot of TMPers I meet and discuss knives with, theirs too. You know, after they saw my review and you know, very positive recommendation of the Skyline. A lot of people, I would say thousands, have gone out and purchased a Skyline. And there's it's with good reason. 2.4 ounces, around $30. Look at that blade. Just perfect. Deeply hollow ground. Great slicing capability. Good blade steel. I mean, here I go again, getting on a tangent. Stuff I've said in other vids. The Skyline is a home run. It really is. For the price point, amazing. And that's why I bring it out, because Kershaw does that frequently in their knife designs. Great quality, very aggressive price points, high value. Let's talk about another one. Not the Skyline, a stable mate, kind of a newer knife in the Kershaw lineup. The Chill. This one's the Plain Edge 3410. Let's talk about also its uh, brother, the partially serrated one. If you guys don't remember, I like the Kershaw serrations. I really do. They're shallow, kind of scallopy. They don't shred the material. They tend to cut, and they keep their edge pretty good. I'm kind of picky on my serrations. Uh, I think I've said that, like a lot. I know, it's just my opinion, my mileage. You may differ. I like it. And my point being is I really don't mind at all getting a combo edge in a Kershaw knife. I cannot say that about a lot of blades, and I'm talking cold steel, Spyderco, Benchmade, some of my other favored manufacturers. I don't like their serrations. Kershaw's, I've always liked them. They're just great. This knife, incidentally, designed by a dude named R.J. Martin. What's up, dude? Great job on designing the chill. I will have to say, it is a great job. Around $16. Let's just knock that out. I have TPs floating around here somewhere. There we go. I'm looking at them as I blabber on. $16 for this knife? Shut up. That's good value. You guys may have seen that. Huh, China. Maybe guys don't dig that so much. Well, nothing fancy. I like U.S. produced blades. I like supporting U.S. I have no problems with that. I'm not going to criticize, critique anybody for that. However, some other guys just don't have that much money. And maybe $16 is all they got to put a new and very functional and cool knife in their pocket. Consider the chill. That's all I'll say. P.O.U. Everyday carry, dudes. This is a great utility knife to you know, clip to your pocket and uh, getting into the size and weight talking point. It is so lightweight, you're going to forget you have it on your person. It almost approaches the very ideal carry weight of one of my all-time reference ultralight EDC blades, SOG Flash 1. 1 1.2 ounces, 2 ounces. Great clip on that SOG still. Every time I bring this out, i got to say that. Look at that clip. It's so cool. Buries deep so you don't lose it generally speaking. Um, I'll talk about the clip here in a sec on the chill. Um, but lightweight and very slim. That'll take us to steel and blade shape. Okay, at $16, you're not going to get S30V. You're not going to get 154CM. You know, you're not going to get any upper end steel. You, it's impossible. You will, however, get an overseas produced and very high value steel like 8CR13MOV that we've seen in a lot of Spyderco designs. That I don't know about you, I've been pretty happy with. You know, and the Spider Coat Tenacious, the Persistence, some of the bird designs, it's a high performing steel, very similar to Ossate, like we've talked about here in TMP, like a lot. Um, it can be surpassed, no doubt, by the higher performing steels with their different makeups and characteristics. I'm not going to go into that for time reasons. Good steel choice, and it brings it in along with the overseas production at the price point I'm talking about. How about the blade shape? I like it. It's thin. It's elegant. That's the word that comes to mind when I see the chill. It's an elegant blade shape. Much thinner than we see in pretty much every other EDC knife choice. Let's bring in the Oh So Sweet, also by Kershaw. Huh. Previously reviewed in that fancy project. Another awesome blade from Kershaw. See the, the theme here? Just high value, great designs. 
Kershaw, you're getting it right, man. I love the so so sweet. But look at the I'm just bring bring it out because you can compare the plan form or the width, probably better said, of the two knives. In my opinion, and that's all it is, probably doesn't count for crap. I like generally a medium width blade for e even EDC uh, tasks. That is maybe food preparation, cutting cord, opening packages, maybe digging a fingernail or something. You know, it's crap we do with our knives, you know, in a utility function like the Oso oh Sweet. This one kind of lacks out a little bit, okay? It is a narrower, narrower blade profile, hollow ground from here. Okay, so I don't think it is a great slicing blade. It just can't be by way of physics. Again, the skyline, you can see that's a thicker blade, more deeply hollow ground. And I will say razor sharp out of the box, the skyline is. This one, not so much. Seems like it's a, it has a more obtuse angle on it that needed some work. And I'll show you, well, let me show you it now. Here comes the plain edge version out of the box. You guys buy these with your ad support of the Knit and Fancy project. And so, like I say, I buy gear and review it. There you go. The chill, plain edged. Uh, out of the box, not so sharp. In fact, very unimpressive. You know, I was kind of disappointed with that. So was this one, you know, the partially serrated version. So they need a little work, maybe a lot of work on ceramic rods. Actually, in my opinion, it kind of needs to be reprofiled. I just haven't had the time to make it easier to sharpen for me. Uh, so that's the blade shape. Uh, while we're looking at the blade shape, let's jump ahead and talk about the spine. No jimping. Huh, yeah, you thought I forgot about jimping, huh? Yeah, July 2010. Yeah, I'm still on a jimping bandwagon. I dig it. And lacking in any other, I don't know, grip formulation, uh, yeah, I would like to see some jimping for better control of the blade. Now, this is an EDC blade. It's not a tactical blade. This is something we hopefully wouldn't have to resort to to do some emergency defensive tasks with. But I still like jimping. So what I do with this one? I jimped it myself. <laughs> not too great of a job. I just took my Dremel wheel, wheel dudes. You know, tried to keep it as perpendicular to the spine as I could. Took me all of five minutes to do it. Guess what? This chill is now jimped. Deal with it. Love it. Yeah, I do. It's a raised spine. It almost begged for it. I'm not sure why RJ didn't do that. Actually, I, I kind of know why. Price. Uh, it's more labor. You know, you start jimping and adding more manufacturing procedures to knives. It adds costs. It always does. There's Nothing's for free. Okay, so the blade shape's good. Love those serrations. Nice tip, by the way. Sharp enough, but it's not delicate. You know, if we bring the skyline in, I didn't do a direct comparison. I'll do it here. You know, it looks like it's a bigger, thicker tip uh, that, you know, on the knife blades in the skyline. So if you want to perhaps a stronger tip, consider the chill. Speed is excellent. Comes out fast with the flipper design. There's no thumb studs on either side. I love the Kershaw flippers. I just do. They come out fast. The lockup, pretty strong. I haven't tweaked this pivot point. There is a very slight amount of movement in this particular chill. Let me check this other one. I haven't even looked at it. Solid as a rock. It's probably because I've been using this for weeks now. And I just haven't, you know, tweaked it and maybe loctited it with the adjustable pivot point here. Uh, up and down movement, none at all. It's a liner lock. Not super strong, but this is not designed to be a super strong knife, do you think? And while we're here, look at how thin this is. <clears throat> G10 handle scales, medium traction variety of G10. And look at the width. Let's bring out that SOG Flash 1 by way of reference again. That is a good reference point, in my opinion. There you go. It's about the same width. Maybe even a little bit thinner than the Flash 1. Hmm, maybe about the same. Notice the backspacer. That's Zytel. It's not a flow-through design, so you may have to blow some compressed air out there to clean it out. Oh, what do we have here? Skeletonized liners and a $16 knife. Kershaw, kudos. Big kudos to RJ. Nice. So you got stainless steel liners, which are skeletonized, slapped on with some G10, which is ultra thin, not rounded really, kind of some square profile uh, slabs. But you know what? Who cares for this style of knife? Many Torx screws, which will fasten it, and you got a lanyard hole here. Let's talk about the clip. Dudes. Again, some of you may be amazed that this is a $16 blade because this clip is positionable. You like tip down? Go for it. You like tip up? You can accommodate it right here. 
you know it's not really switchable from left to all four sides but at least you can go tip up tip, tip, tip down in this carry configuration I love it the clip is trim and low profile securely fastened with two screws you see a theme here the theme is it's a well designed knife durability I think will be excellent it has been in my use I haven't seen or identified any problems in it I mean that slight amount of movement is my fault as a user I just haven't tightened it up the 8CR 13MOV blade steel I think is relatively rust resistant as long as you don't put it in salty environments and you don't abuse it relatively good edge holding granted again the grind does not come sharp out of the box so you will have to touch it up this one I've worked on a ceramic rod it has a medium sharp edge I'm still not overly impressed you know again if I compare it against the skyline this dominates it in sharpness I always keep it real with you guys I'm not trying to you know put out a snowstorm of positivity out there I'm just telling you the way it is you know could you get your chill to be razor sharp uh, probably again that narrow profile here and that very abrupt approach to the relief edge I don't know just me it might cause a little problem in achieving that um, but it is elegant and in some ways a thinner blade and some tasks might be better value are you kidding me it's off the charts sixteen dollars for this and I'm ballparking it might be more might be less you know but when I got around sixteen dollars um, pretty smoking um, great place uh, it's a great knife super lightweight two ounces fast relatively rugged for its POU yes even you can go jimp it with your Dremel tool do it to it I wish it came that way but again adding cost highly recommended this is a Kershaw chill this is a fast dudes check the time unproduced old school knife vid from nothing fancy um, but dudes if you only have a few bucks you want a new Kershaw blade I really don't have much bad to say about the chill. See ya.